Okay, hello, hello, hi, welcome to my new studio. I broke my microphone, so this is just what we got now. I gotta get a new chair. Hang on, out with the old, in with the new. I got this chair from my office. Don't take it to a blacklight. Anyways, back to the story. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, freeze drying. Okay, yeah, some of you might already have heard about freeze drying. It's big right now. You can hardly go to a gas station without seeing some kind of freeze dried candy on the shelves. Even if you don't think you know about freeze drying, you kind of do. If you've ever had a bowl of Lucky Charms, those marshmallows in it are freeze dried. But do you know what goes into freeze drying? like exactly what the process is or where it got its roots? No? Let me help you. Okay, so we're going way back, like 1500s way back, okay, to the Incan Empire just on the ridge of the Andes Mountains, which is a very high mountain range, but also very accessible. And there's this king, his name is Atahualpa. 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 One day the people come to Atahualpa and, the, and it goes like this. Ah, uh, yes, my loyal subjects. Have you been putting your food at the bottom of the mountain like I've been asking you to? Actually, no. But I specifically said put it at the bottom of the mountain. Did I not? Well, uh, the funny thing is, is we we did that a year ago. Oh, so we're just wasting food now? No, actually, the food's, like, still good. And we brought it down from the top of the mountain, and it's, like, still good. Oh. Uh, everybody put your food to the top of the mountain. And here's the funny thing about this series. The more I do it, the more I realize people just forgot about shit until World War II. Like, that was the next time they updated freeze drying. 450 years later. In 1949, the French Military Blood Institute, which is both a very real and very specific place, introduces French lyto... Lyophilized. That. French lyophilized plasma, or a very fancy way of saying dry white blood cells. Now, if you didn't already know, dry things weigh less than wet things. That's a very important fact. Bookmark that. We're going to come back to it. Which allowed for a lot of new humanitarian efforts and less casualty rates. It was a good thing. Cool thing. But I know what you're wondering. When did Uncle Sam dig his claws in? Well, in July of 1969, America did a little something you might know as land on the f***ing moon. And those God-fearing American patriots needed to eat something up in them their stars. But do you think NASA just pulled it out of their ass? No, they got some inspiration from a little thing you might know as instant coffee. Take a seat. Here's the thing about coffee. People like it a lot. Like your grandpa's grandpa's grandma's grandpa liked it. That's how long it's been around. But it wasn't until World War I that it really started looking familiar. So after World War I, the global supply chain was, for lack of a better term, and Brazil, who is the largest exporter of coffee beans in the world, was left with tons and tons and tons of beans that were going to go bad. So they needed a way to preserve them. But who's going to help? Enter the wonderful humanitarian-pilled philanthropy cord company, Nescafe. Just kidding. It's opposite day. They kind of suck. But don't send me a cease and desist. This is all for funsies. Ha <laughs> ha. So Nescafe quickly becomes the biggest manufacturer of instant coffee in the world. And they go through a series of trials where the coffee tastes bad but stays good. And then it tastes good but goes bad until they land on freeze drying, which is eventually what inspired NASA. But what? is freeze drying. Freeze drying is the process of supercooling something in a perfect vacuum, then allowing to rapidly reheat so that the water molecules trapped inside sublimate. Now I know what you're thinking, sublimation? What the heck? Allow me to demonstrate. I'm continuity era Rob. You can tell that from my outfit. Let's pretend for a moment that these cotton balls are H2O's three states of matter. Ice, water, steam. Let's take water. Water's flexible. It can move around. It can separate, move back together. And what happens when you remove energy from water? You get ice. Now the same principle applies to water in the opposite direction. You apply enough energy to water and you get steam. Okay, it's that easy. What if I told you we can skip this step altogether? Let's take some water. We're gonna freeze it. Now we put it in a vacuum. Now does the ice loosen up back into water? No, the vacuum's stopping that. Instead, the ice goes right to steam in a process called Tremendous news, while that was happening, I fixed my microphone. Oh no, taking it off, I don't like it. I know what you're thinking, well freeze drying's pretty fun, Rob, but what about its bohemian older sister, dehydration? First of all, this video's not about that, okay? But it does kinda have something to do with dehydration, so I do feel like I owe it to you to explain. All freeze drying is dehydration, not all dehydration is freeze drying. Like, you get what I'm saying? No? Bummer. Check this out.
We gotta go back again, this time to 12,000 BC, or before Christmas. That's right, beef jerky is older than Santa Claus. You heard it here first. And though dehydration and freeze drying have the same end goal, the two couldn't be more different. Remember all the science I just showed you? Well, throw it away. Dehydration doesn't use any of that. It just uses heat and or circulating air to get rid of the water and food. And yeah, the whole point was to preserve it, because back then they didn't have conventional refrigeration, and one good bout of diarrhea would probably kill you. Hi, I'm Admiral Rob, and I'm here to tell you about today's sponsor. <laughs> me! I, I don't got a sponsor. I, it's, it's just me. It's just me. I'm not making money off of this. I'm not even monetized on YouTube yet. If you're a sponsor, I'm looking for you. If you're not a sponsor, interact with the video because I need a sponsor. That's all. Back to the video. Thank you so much. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, let's answer the real question about how do the two differ? Well, I've created this handy acronym to remember. Nuts. Everybody loves... Nuts. That stands for nutrients, water content, texture, and shelf life. Not to be biased or anything, but freeze drying wins in literally every category, except maybe texture. I don't know, it's very circumstantial. We'll get into that. I'd love to show you what I'm talking about first person. There's a little problem though. Freeze dryers cost thousands of dollars. Let's freeze dry some things and dehydrate them too. I have a dehydrator built into my oven. It has a fan, it's a de. de Oh, widescreen? Yeah, you haven't seen my kitchen yet in widescreen. I can't really push the mess to one side to film a vertical video anymore, so I just left it messy. Freeze dried, dehydrated, we're gonna make uh, same ingredients both ways and then compare them. And I'm gonna change my outfit a few times. You might even see the lights outside go dark and bright again, but that's why they call me Continuity Era Rob. So what's the verdict? I feel like with sweet stuff, dehydrating is kind of the way to go, but with savory, I kind of prefer the dehydration process because this stuff turns to raw meat in my mouth. Oh, oh God, cut back to the other Rob. Now, I know I've really been s and freeze dryers, D, but there is one major criteria that dehydration wins in 10 out of 10 times price, okay? That thing cost me four figures and two months in shipping, and that, well, I did that in my oven for free. You can't beat free, right? For the everyman, I think it's pretty clear. Now, to answer the question that sparked all of this, do astronauts actually eat astronaut ice cream? No, they have a fridge on the space station now, and they have fresh food. I knew that from the beginning, I just needed a good hook to get you in. But NASA has gone on record to say astronauts on the International Space Station do eat freeze-dried foods regularly. Now I know what you're thinking. If they have a fridge and fresh food, why are they eating that, huh? Do you remember that thing I said earlier about freeze-dried food weighing a lot less? Do you know how much it costs to send one pound of food into space? Take a guess. And now I'm gonna look it up like I knew the whole time. Okay, I just, I actually, I just looked it up. I thought this was gonna be a lot more alarming. It used to be 12 grand. It used to be 12 grand, it's 2,500 now. Thanks, Elon. But my point still stands. Would you rather send one pound of fresh food or 10 pounds of 
food that they rehydrate with their pee. And to be honest with you, I think that's the only time you're ever going to hear freeze drying and cost effective used in the same sentence. And, and I got a freeze dryer now, so if you want to see something specific, let me know in the comments. I'm down to get weird with it. Make sure to check out my Shmatreon. There's a lot more high quality content just like this. Make sure to repost this video if you feel like you learned something. And thank you for listening to my info dump.